Okay, hello and welcome to Branch Replays Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelists of the Roses. So, I initially played this game a couple of years ago on the channel, but much like with many of the other things, I'm doing a replay of it for general convenience and, I guess, ease of viewing. So, this game came out in 2001 in Japan, and on the PS2, and then came out in the West in 2003. And I'm just going to click New Game and get right on into it, because the next, like, 15 minutes or so is basically just going to be a massive preamble before we actually get to start playing card games. So, uh, it is time for a bit of a history lesson. Okay, so, England, 1480s. The Wars of the Roses, a power struggle between the Houses of Lancaster, the Red Rose, and the Yorkists, the White Rose, to decide a royal successor, was nearing an end. With the Yorkists well in the lead, the reign of King Richard III was but a step away, and in France, Yugi, Henry Tudor, the last Lancastrian heir, was being forced to live a life of exile. The Lancastrian forces were rendered powerless by ancient cards of sorcery, wielded by Seto and his seven followers, who, known as the Rose Crusaders, served under the flag of Lord Crawford, a powerful Yorkist nobleman. Lacking a duelist to champion their cause, defeat was imminent for the Lancastrians. In England, dual card games were still at the fledgling stage. Thus, uh, thus the Lancastrians had to look elsewhere for a dual master capable of facing the Rose Crusaders. So, uh, Rosencruz in this game is Kyber, but we'll see more of him later. With this in mind, Margaret My Beaufort of Lancaster secretly requested a High Druid to summon a duelist from another age. So, basically the general plot setup of this is Wars of the Roses are happening, the Yorkists are winning, and the Lancastrians summon you from the modern day to play card games to help them win the war, basically. That isn't a joke, that is actually the plot of this game. Okay, so... Summoned from the mystic circle of red and white wo wo red and white roses, the one capable of harnessing pure power. There is truth to the legend of the Rose Duelist. Lady Margaret, I, I did it! Now we have the means of defeating the evil forces of Rosencruz. Oh, my apologies. In my excitement, I'd forgotten I was in the presence of the Rose Duelist. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Simon McMurran, High Druid and Servant of Lancaster. Maybe I, may I be so bold as to ask the name by which the Rose Duelist would like to be known? So, now we have our standard name entry screen. However, depending on what name you put in, you will get different starter decks available. So, for example, if I type in branch normally, I will get uh, starter decks that give me Tactical Warrior, which I used the first time I played through, uh, Fairy King Truesdale, and Thunder Nyan Nyan. If I all caps it, I will get Air Knight Parshaf, Molten, uh, Molten Behemoth, or whatchamacallit, uh, Maiden of the Aqua. There's 17 total starter decks you can get, and I will quickly bring up what each of them are. Not like the full deck recipe, just like what the deck leader is. So, what I'm actually going to do, for my own kind of inconvenience, is I tested this in advance, because I know which deck I want, and I can get it if I put it like this. It, yes, seeing it in, seeing it presented like, like, like that may irritate me for some of the game, but you know what? It happens. Okay, so, a fine name indeed. Now, here's the situation. The year is 1485, and you are currently in Stonehenge, near Salisbury, England. England is in turmoil with the House of Lancaster's rightful claim to the throne being challenged by the Yorkist usurpers. The power struggle is referred to as the Wars of the Roses, a name based on the badges used by both sides, a red rose for the Lancastrians and a white rose for the Yorkists. Right now, uh, right now our kingdom is threatened by the Yorkists and their wrongful claim to the throne, all because the Yorkists enjoy the support of the Rose Crusaders and their sorceress white rose cards. Using our Red Rose cards, we summoned you to this day and age. We hoped that your dueling experience would defeat the Rose Crusaders and lead us to victory. You will help us. Of course you will. Foolish of me to even doubt where your loyalties lie. Rumor has it that only the legendary Rose Duelist stands a chance against the power of Rosencruz. We appreciate any help that you can provide against them. Before I forget, I should warn you that the rules to dueling differ here from those of your age. Here in England, dueling is governed by what is known as the Perfect Rule. In addition to several minor distinctions, there are two major differences. 
One is the existence of movement or positioning, and the other is the concept of the Death Leader. Uh, these were two aspects of dueling that were lost in the process when the ancient sport of duel monsters was adapted to card form. The perfect rule represents these lost rules that were miraculously revived here in England. Perhaps a practice duel shall serve oh, shall be a better explanation. Let's not do that, because I can explain that as I go, and realistically, Yu-Gi-Oh is pretty simple to understand, especially this game. You know, because this isn't like the modern game where you have to worry about like a bazillion types of hand traps, XZ's summons, synchro summons, uh, pendulum summons, all of that. I don't even know what half of those terms even mean. <laughs> okay, first you must select a deck to duel with. It's important that you feel the vibrations of the deck leader, the minute resonations that ring true to your soul. The cards themselves draw their power from the energies of the Ancient Ones. The deck leader acts as an intermediate between the Ancient Ones and the deck wielder. Uh, it is essential that you select a card leader whose rhythm matches the stirrings of your soul. Here are several decks from which to choose. Give it some serious thought and make your selection. Choose carefully, for the deck you select will guide the destiny of your duels. Okay, so, we have the Fairy King Truesdale deck. It's okay. Like, it's primarily bugs and plants. It's good on a forest field. Then, we have Twin Headed Behemoth, which has mostly dragons, but it has a couple of other things. It's also a kind of middle of the road deck. However, I am going to use the cr Cruel, 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 I don't know how it's meant to be pronounced, but I'm going to be using this deck. It is commonly considered to be the worst starter deck in the game. So, uh, I'm basically setting myself up to play on hard mode. So, away we go with perhaps the worst starter deck. We'll see how it goes. Ah, I see you've selected your deck. Honestly, it would have been great if you could see, like, the full deck list before you choose, but hey, I guess that's just the game. Hmm, so that's the effect of the Celtic Red Rose cards. It looks like there's some truth to the rumour that the Red Rose cards are capable of time transformation. Who's there? Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate this man's theme music and how smooth it is? Like, I'm just gonna let it play for, like, the next 5-10 seconds, because it's really good. It's been some it's been some time since the Battle of Barnet, old one. Rosencruz, what brings you here? Only a member of the Rose Crusaders may call me by that name. If you may recall, I told you once before that you may only address me as Seto. Or does your memory fail you, old man? And you, you must be the dreaded Rose to us. I must admit there's a certain aura of power emanating from you. I believe an introduction is in order. I'm Seto, leader of the Rose Crusaders. There are members of our little group who prefer to call me by the name of Christian Rosencruz. So, I remember looking at this a few weeks ago. Oh, so, uh, my my recollection of the details might be a bit hazy. Like, Christian Rosencruz, I remember, like, it be... I remember the Wikipedia page just, like, wasn't sure if he was actually a person who actually existed or not. Or whatever. It seemed really strange. I would have to, like, look more into it. Also, I'd just like to note... Kaiba's super cool, like, blue eyes, white dragon armor. That's so cool, I love that. Anyway, I ask you again, what brings you here, Seto? Mind your manners, old man. What else would have brought me here? I've come for the Red Rose cards. After all, it was you who showed me the summoning capabilities. Yeah, uh, how, the sh how the summoning capabilities would evolve when the Red and Rose cards were combined with the transport powers of the White Rose cards. You aren't thinking of attempting the Forbidden Rose summoning. If so, then the Red Rose cards must never fall into your evil hands. Card sorcery taps into the powers of the Ancient Ones by their very nature. Each card is a double-edged sword that can cut both ways. The Rose, card, uh, the Rose cards alone harness tremendous power. There's no telling what horrors one might unleash but unleash unto the world by combining both red and white. I'll sacrifice my own life if need be to prevent any from uttering the Spell of Doom. The Spell of Doom? No. Oh. I don't know why I turned Fool to No, but here we are. The 16 red and white rose cards grant power over all. Druid legend has twisted the true meaning of these cards. We Rose Crusaders have sworn to create a utopia, free from the ravages of war. 
we intend to accomplish this with the power of the cards, and we shall do so by extending the rule of Richard III throughout the known world. Hmm. By the way, it was clever of you to form a circle of red roses within the right rose barrier to summon the rose duelist, but you are foolish to come alone. This area is surrounded, and if you wish to leave with your life, you will do... Uh, you will do so only by handing over the red rose cards. Me? A fool? Then what about you? Are you fool enough? Are you fool enough to actually believe the red rose cards would remain here in my possession? Right after the summoning, I had the cards dispersed among our best duelists to keep them from your tainted hands. I mean, we saw we didn't see another person. We didn't see like a runner who like, hey, he summoned us and we and, like he just gave them the cards and they ran for it. Anyway, so. Then you leave me with, no, with but one option. I shall enlist the aid of your precious Rose Duelist. You take leave of your own senses. And you speak too soon, old man. Heed my words, Duelist. If you wish to return to your proper time period, you will require 16 cards of the Red and White Roses. The Red and White positions must be laid out in reverse of the summoning order to send you home. You know the spell? Since you need the 16 Rose cards just as much as I do, I propose a partnership. Help us gather the cards, and I shall guarantee your safe uh, your return after we've, we've achieved our ultimate goal. An absurd proposal. Do you do you really think the honourable Rose Duelist would even lend an ear to your ridiculous proposal? Can you be so sure, old man? Let me see. Simon's side has the eight re eight of the red rose cards, while my side, the Rose Crusaders, has possession of the eight white rose cards. As the numbers are even, simple arithmetic indicates that you could side with either of us. But I'm sure you'll take into account who's winning this war. After all, who was desperate enough to summon you in the first place? I think it's quite clear which side is better positioned to send you home. Heed not the words of this, this power-hungry lunatic. Must you resort to name-calling? I'm hurt. I'll tell you what, why don't we leave the decision to our dear duelist? After all, Simon, the duelist's, the duelist's future is not for us to decide now, is it? Well, yes, but... Splendid. In keeping with the tradition of the old temple gardens, I offer you a choice, duelist. Here are two roses. The white represents me, and the red for old Simon here. For the sake of justice, choose the red rose. Stand by my side, duelist. Choose the white rose. So, this is basically, do you want to play villain side or hero side? Personally, I've always thought the Yorkist side of the game was a lot easier. Like, I've always thought the Yorkist side was so much easier. But the Lancastrian side is like the historic, well, the more historically accurate side, because, you know, that's the one where the actual events of history follow. So I'm going to side with the Lancastrians, but, I, but after I finish that side of the game, I will be coming back and doing the Yorkist side as well. How disappointing. Oh well, you, you made your choice, and I respect it, like that. For now, I will guarantee your safe passage until you've met with Yugi. After all, I don't want our little game to end too quickly. That wouldn't be sporting at all. I look forward to the day when we meet again, Duelist. Until then, farewell. So now we leave Stonehenge, hop on a boat, and head on over to France, and where we meet Yugi in Brest on the Isle of Bretagne. Um, also, um, if I've if I've mispronounced anything there, I'm real sorry. <laughs> Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate how smooth this music is as well? Like that, that, this OST is so smooth sometimes. I present Prince Yuki, last Prince of Lancaster, a true Welshman and the hope for all of us who call ourselves Celts. My lord, may I present the Rose Duelist. You serve us well, Simon. My mother was wise in summoning you from Scotland. You honour me, sire. Duelist, I'm Yugi. Actually, Henry Shoot is my name, but I find it tiresome, so you may call me Yugi. So, Yugi in this game is Henry Tudor, who would become King Henry VII of England. I'm sure Simon explained our situation, but it's only right that I request your services myself. I need you to return to England and put an end to the threat of the Rose Crusaders. Their white rose cards form a barrier that prevent my- that prese the words- that prevents my armies from setting foot on British soil. Although we Celts have the Red Rose cards, we are, we are but inheritors who are unable to wield their full power. In the hopes of reversing our fortunes, we gambled on a druid legend that spoke of a Rose Duelist. 
Uh, according to the same legend, one must use a deck whose cost is lower than that of an opponent to, uh, to capture a rose card for another color. I believe that it is important that you should keep this in mind. The cost of your deck should not exceed that of your opponent. I would like you, uh, I would like you to note that our resources have been pressed to the limit, requiring us to invade England by August. My, uh, my troops will land in Milford Haven, Wales, and will march on to face the enemy at Bosworth Field. Having all of Rose Crusaders out of commission by this time would be ideal, Yo, but that might prove difficult, so any reduction of their force would be greatly appreciated. Right then, let us part company and reunite in Bosworth. Simon will provide you with the details as to when and where we'll meet once more. Luck be with you, duelist. And we will not be seeing St. Iman McMurray again for the remainder of the game. Like, seriously, we will not be seeing him again for the rest of the game. Actually, no, that's a slight lie. We will see him again when we do... When we side with the Yorkists, when we reload the game. We will barely see him again. So, now we have our first two opponents available. We can either go to Tewkesbury and duel Rex Raptor or Chester and Duel Weevil. And here's the thing, this is going to be a rough first few duels. Like, I'm, I'm just mentioning that right now, these first few duels are going to be difficult. So, uh, first things first, I'm actually gonna save. Uh, I also accidentally opened that menu, didn't want to do that. Actually, you know what, let's have a quick look at our deck. So, we have Kreul. We don't need to worry about this because, realistically, uh, it doesn't matter. So, we have Bra so we have Blackland, Fire Dragon, Wicked Dragon with your starts head twice. Yeah, it seems like we just have a whole bunch of fiends. Like, we have a lot of fiend cards. And a few machines here and there. Also, we have Sparks and Hinotama. I'm getting these out of the deck as soon as I can. Paralyzing Potion could actually come in handy, though. Okay, so, I am going to go and duel Weevil first, and this could actually prove to be a terrible, terrible, awful, horrendously awful, garbage, terrible decision. But we'll see about that in just a second. So, off we go to Chester. So you're the legendary Rose Duelist. Prepare to face the sting of my insect deck. Okay, so now we get to do our first duel, and we will very quickly realize uh, that... So, for reference, I mentioned earlier that the Cruel deck, the deck I chose, is commonly considered to be one of, if not the absolute worst. And Weevil is a fantastic first opponent to show why this is a problem. Also, before I do anything else, I just want to show you these stained glass windows here. So, depending on what your deck leader is, you will have a different one for this. So, obviously, because Weevil has bugs, he has insect. He has the perfectly ultimate Great Moth, basic insect, Gokobor, Killer Needle, and a giant flea on his. And because mine is Fiends, I have the Summon Skull, Ryukushin, uh, Feral Imp, uh, a different art for Karibo, and Metal Guardian. Honestly, kind of goofy how that, how that Karibo looks, but whatever. So, uh, I think that's about even. So, here's why we immediately have an issue. Here's where we instantly run into a problem. Um, if I play a Fiend in the forest, it loses 500 attack and defense points. I don't know how, I don't know why, like, I don't know what the rational explanation for that is. It's like, why would a Fiend be weaker in the forest. Like, I don't know. Maybe, like, I don't see the line of thinking for that. Maybe I'm just thinking too rationally. Maybe I'm thinking, like, fiend demon. Like, maybe I'm trying to, like, mentally link it and just go, like, fiend equal demon. People often talk about, like, oh, there's demons in these woods. It's like, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. So, if anything, fiends should have an advantage in the forest, right? Apparently not. Okay, so we also have uh, the Wretched Ghost of the Attic and Karibo. They won't fuse, but hey, Karibo is cuter, so I'll keep Karibo there. Also, 
I do have a couple of strategies, but I need some of the other cards in my deck. Like, I need a couple of the other cards that I have available. Like, I need to draw those before I can really put the plan into motion. But hey, eventually we should. This, this is the start of the plan. Ushioni is a key component of the plan. So, I may be in a position. This, so you might, you might want to take note on this because I may be about to be able to go on offense against Weevil with the Cruel Dark. Like. I know it's- I've always known it's possible, but still. So, Fiend Castle will power up Fiend Monsters by 500 attack points. So now, even on- even in the forest, Ushioni is at its base attack stat. That, by itself, is pretty good for me. And Call of the Haunted will change all of my monsters into zombies. Meaning, I won't lose the 500 attack- me meaning, my fiends won't have the- more accurately, my fiends that are currently on the field will no longer lose that 500 attack points. And that, by itself, is massive. Because with the boost given by Fiend Castle, that means Ushioni will be on 2650 at all times. Meaning, it can overpower all but, like, two things that, uh, whatchamacallum can play. And that, just in itself, is a lot of help to me. Although, I don't really know what I can- what else I can do with most of my cards here. I think I'm actually gonna probably just keep a hold of them and just wait until I draw- until I have enough stars for that second neck hunter. Also, I've just realized I've been in this duel for a few minutes now and haven't explained basic Yu-Gi-Oh. So, uh, in duel sub- what's he- okay, he's attacking neck hunter with dungeon worm, okay. So, in Duel of the Roses, uh, every, every duel is played on a 7x7 seven seven grid. Also, uh, this is the Wasteland field. Every field has its own unique, like, kind of locale to it. And every monster has its own unique attack animation. Some of the attack animations are a lot more unique and interesting than others. However, I will say that I think the general improvement in quality... Especially for the models, for a game that came out in 2001 is really impressive. And also, turn turn, good job, neck on uh, wait, and just like eat that hit. Uh, but yeah, so, pretty much in Duel Super Roses, games, well, matches are played on a 7x7 seven seven grid. And this is pretty simple. That is a pretty simple grid, as you can probably tell. It's not exactly the most complicated thing in the world. However, uh, also, this won't fuse into anything good, so I'm okay with throwing it away. So, basically, they're playing on a 7x7 grid, and you can uh, you can attack the deck leader. If, uh, if I got a monster here and attacked the basic insect, it would just be a direct attack. Wait. No, 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 no. I must play it. I must play it. I must play it. I must play it. Don't attack Ushioni. Don't attack Ushioni. Don't attack Ushioni. Don't attack Ushioni. Okay. Crisis. Crisis averted. Okay. If he'd attacked Ushioni there, all hope was lost. Like, I I wish I was being hyperbolic there, but no, if he'd attacked Ushioni there, all hope was lost. So now, I... I flipped a spell card. Oh, no. Okay, I'm gonna move Ushioni along a tile, just in case. If this man- if this man attacks my Call of the Haunted this turn with Dungeon Worm, I'm gonna be livid. If he attacks to- if he attacks that, I'm gonna be so mad. Okay, he didn't. I'm safe. Okay, so, as I've started to explain like four times now, Basically, it's played on a 7x7 seven seven grid, you can still have up to 5 monsters and 5 spell and trap cards on the field at any given time. Um, however, uh, also, uh, if you have a field power bonus, uh, do I have anything that can use it? Never mind, I don't. But in a second, because I'm going to activate Call of the Haunted right now. So, here's the thing. Under normal circumstances, or if your card is face down, 
you can move one tile at a time. If you have a field power bonus and are face up, you can move two at a time. Um, but only if you are on a field that gives you the power boost. Just, which is kind of handy. Then if a monster is vertical, if a monster is like aligned vertically, it's in attack mode, horizontally is defense mode. But, and obviously, depending on if a monster in attack mode attacks a monster in attack mode, but as uh, as Weevil is giving us a great example here, yeah, the monster with the higher attack points and so it destroys the weaker one, and the difference is taken out of someone's life points. Like the so his Gokumor attacks, it has seventeen hundred attack points. And fortunately, my Ushioni has twenty six fifty, and can just uh, hit him for nine hundred and fifty damage. I'll be honest, I hadn't really expected. Like, I didn't expect Ushioni to be, like, creating, the, like, a small version of the Freezer Ball and just throwing that at Goka Ball. That was not something I, I expected. Now, there are multiple types of tiles. There's one special type of tile that I will mention, that I'll mention in probably a few episodes' time when we see it for the first time. Actually, it might not even be all that long. No, there's two special ones I'll mention when I first see them but we won't be seeing those for a little while. But, as it currently stands, uh, as it currently stands, Ushioni it will probably be the most powerful card on the field. Also, it didn't change, uh, Call of the Haunted didn't change all of my monsters permanently, it's just like the ones I currently had on the field at that moment were turned into zombies. So, pretty much, uh, there's normal field, nothing gets a bonus from it, nothing is weakened by it, everything's great with that. There are forest fields. Forest fields will power up bugs, plants, beasts, beast warriors, insects, and pyro monsters. However, it will weaken fiends for whatever awful, awful reason it can have. So uh, let's have Ushioni just kind of step back and destroy the dungeon worm real quick. So then there is the meadow, where spellcasters are made weaker, but warriors and beast warriors are made more powerful. There's the ocean, so sea fields. Uh, sea fields, as you can probably expect, are more powerful for water-based monsters, like aquas, fish, sea serpents, and thunder monsters. However, it will weaken pyro monsters and machines. I think rocks go even. I don't think it changes rocks. Then there's mountains. Mountains power up thunder monsters, winged beasts, and dragons. I think there might be another one there that I forgot, but I think it's just them. But in this game, it will also weaken zombies. Which is kind of understandable, I guess. That's because I can't imagine a zombie climbing a mountain would go very well. Then there is... Uh, which one have I not done? There's Wasteland. Wasteland, obviously, is not a hospitable ter terrain for fish, it's not good for water monsters, and it's not good for sea serpents. However, it is very good for machines, rocks, dinosaurs, and zombies. Uh, then there is the Darkness Field, which will weaken fairies, but will power up... Uh, it'll weaken fairies, but it'll power up fiends, spellcasters, and zombies. So I, so honestly, in an ideal situation, I would be able to get uh, some of those moving on in the future. That's a monster. I know that for a fact now. It's a, a spider. Okay. Also, I should turn off the battle animations because realistically, uh, I've shown the two fields that are available for this uh, for this field. I suppose. Just also, uh, I forgot, fairies are also made more powerful on mountains. Fairy does get a benefit from the mountain. Okay, my paralyzing potion procs infinite dismissal. Infinite dismissal procs a spellbound effect, meaning that I can't move it for three turns. Effectively, it is kind of just a dead card on the field for the next three turns. Spellbound effects can happen in a multitude of ways. They can happen either by... He just did that to his own monster. Like, he just 
he just paralyzing potioned his own monster, like, into... Like, that monster can't move anymore. That, that monster is effectively dead now. <laughs> Wait, how does this work? If I've turned Karibo into a zombie, can I fuse it with this and create a dragon zombie? No, I cannot. I guess the game isn't that advanced. Although, to be fair, I can't really claim to have expected it to have done that. Also, I really hope that that was a good monster. Like, if that was Rose Spectre of Dunn or Quagga Hercules, that'd be so funny. Like, if that was one of his good monsters and he did that to her, because it, because it tried to equip it, so I think it was a monster. So, honestly, I just want to see what it was. And we attack. It was a Hercules Beetle. And I forgot to turn the animations off. Either way, Hercules Beetle is a pretty nice card, and honestly, honestly, if I won, if I win Hercules Beetle at the end of this duel, I wouldn't be too mad about that. Hercules Beetle is a kind of okay opening card for the game. Now, I'm also gonna... Oh, wait, I can't. Um... I'll move my other Knack Hunter forward. To be totally honest, I have my two Knack Hunters here, but honestly, Ushioni is kind of doing all the work, because Ushioni over... In this current state, Ushioni will overpower all but two things Weevil can summon. And I still... I still forgot to turn the animations off. Okay, as soon as my turn happens, as soon as I gain control of the game again. Also, that was a terrible play on my part, because I no longer have anything... Like, I don't really have a line of defense that can prevent that hunter spider from, from like, attacking me. And it can close in on me faster than I can stop it, really. Is what I would be saying if I didn't have Phantom Dewan here. Phantom Dewan, when flipped face up, will spellbound a monster for three turns. And Ushioni can just gradually... Ushioni can just, uh, slowly approach. He's just slowly approaching. He's walking with purpose. He doesn't have legs. How is he walking? I don't know. He's floating with purpose. And there's Fatma Dewan, spellbound for three turns. That buys me time, and time is money and value. So, spellbound effects can happen via... Uh, they can happen via spell effects, like Fatma Dewan there, or Infinite Dismissal. There are trap cards, like Tears of the Mermaid, that can also have a significant effect. For example, uh, they can. there's some that will reduce your opponent's monster's attack points. Tears of the Mermaid will reduce it by 600, Mesmeric Control, I think, does it by 800. So, uh, they can be very much a problem to have to deal with. Also... Uh, Weevil is going to have to start running soon. And by that, I mean, he has to start running right now. Because he is now backed into a corner. Because he can still summon, but he will ha- if he- If he doesn't move, he just eats a hit right now. And if he eats a hit, that's pretty bad for him. Because, uh, Ushioni is a pretty strong monster to have. And honestly, I'm just I'm just very glad about the fact that I might actually win with the Cruel Deck in the first attempt. And in not like a and in a duel that didn't take like 45 minutes. And di did I turn the battle animations off? <laughs> I don't know how I've done this like six times. I said I was gonna do it immediately, and I just haven't been doing it. I'm so bad at this. Uh, professionalism. I'm a professionalism. Am I right? <laughs> Not professionalism. Not even once. <laughs> also, I need to play very carefully here, because uh, Weevil could just destroy me here. However, however, if he puts himself in a bad position, I could turn this to my advantage, because he'll now have to move forward. And Rose Spectre of Dunn eventually might end up having to come onto the Wasteland. And if it has to enter the Wasteland, that's entering my domain. However, the Hunter Spider is free to move on his turn, on his next turn. And the Rose Spectre of Dunn is kind of scary to deal with. I think I might, I might have to pull Ushioni back. 
I might have to pull Ushioni back before it can do anything dangerous. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to pull Ushioni back. I still forgot to turn it off. I still forgot to turn it off. Okay, I'm mashing L1 as soon as I get... As soon as I get control of the game again, I'm turning these animations off this time. Okay. Also, I probably shouldn't have said anything. I was so confident that I was gonna win, and... Oh yeah, right, I played Solitude like 10 turns ago. I played a monster like 10 turns ago, and I just haven't been moving it. Whoops. <laughs> I probably could have done a lot of damage with that, or had it destroyed ages ago. Okay, negate attack. Just, well, negate attack. Just, well, it negates the attack. I know. Riveting, huge if true. Uh, I don't really know what my options are here. I think I kind of just need to play on the run. I need to kind of play on the run, but at the same time, I am in an awful situation with this. Because... Wait, okay. This is fine. This is significantly more fine than it was about five seconds ago. I stopped mashing L1. I stopped mashing L1 as soon as I got control of the game. I was mashing L1 until I got control of the game. Okay, so he... Yeah, my solitude j did just get destroyed instantly. Okay, this is going terribly. Fortunately for me, Rose Spectre of Dunn did pull back. And also that gets spellbound for how long? I get spellbound for three turns. Fantastic. Also, monsters can get spellbound by other means. In so if you have a bad like attribute matchup or something. I forget I don't remember exactly how it works, but if you have a bad attribute type matchup, you can also get spellbound because of that. Okay, let's turn those off. Now, let's... I can't attack with that. Neck Hunt Mel to get destroyed. I need to move here, get rid of Unknown Warrior Fiend, and I think I lose regardless now. I think I lose regardless now, because Neck Hunter can't defend me enough. Like, Neck Hunter can't defend me enough. Ushioni can't get to him fast enough. Wait. He's... He's throwing. He is... He is absolutely throwing. He, you know what? I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna count my win before it happens, but he's throwing. He didn't move. So I can just hit him with Ushioni. I just get the hit in. For 2650, he's down to 200 life points. Nice. Like, I am so close to victory now. The win is, like, in line of sight. Also, here's the thing. If I had if I had a Yami field, like, if I had a Dark field, I would have so many really good monsters here. Like, genuinely, I think if I had access to a Dark field, I think this deck would actually be pretty solid. Unfortunately, I did choose to go with perhaps the worst possible matchup for this. Genuinely, I think this will be the hardest du I think this will genuinely be the toughest duel of this side of the game for me. Because I didn't really have anything to fight them with, if and I had to rely on Call of the Haunted Marathon. And... He gave up, basically. He effectively just gave up on, on winning. But you know what? I'll take that. He... I, you know what? Giving up upon art, I will ha I will happily take my win. Like, it, it, a win is a win, you know? So, with that, Weevil is defeated. The Cruel Dark manages to take a win in its first duel. And now we get to play the graveyard slot. So, if a card is put into the graveyard, it can, it can go into the graveyard slot. However, I didn't destroy most of his good cards, so most of the cards in here are kind of mediocre. So we're just gonna see what we can win. If nothing else, if nothing else, I can win some bugs, so I can, you know, if I duel them again, I can make it a little easier for myself. So we win. Goblin's Secret Remedy. Basic Insect. And... 
a second basic insect, but, you know. You do get special cards if you line up all three. Also, I'm garbage at slots in anything, so uh, I will be terrible at these every single time. I'll probably get garbage for most of the game. Um, no! I, this can't be happening. So, Weevil loses and we take our first White Rose card. It wasn't pretty. It was kind of a disaster in multiple different ways. Is, But a win is a win. And we've now unlocked the paths to Towton to deal with Bandit Keith, or Lancashire to, do deal with, to deal with Pegasus. Looking at their deck costs versus ours, we are not prepared for that. We will get just absolutely curb stomped into the dirt. So we aren't going to be doing that just yet. So what I'm going to do is end off today's episode here, and next time we're going to go and we're going to duel Rex Raptor in Chooksbury. And from there, we'll be able to continue on from that point onwards. So, I'm going to end off today's episode here. As always, feel free to leave a comment or click any of the buttons down below if you feel so inclined. Hopefully future duels won't take quite as long. But I'm going to end off today's episode here. Okay, thanks for watching. Later.